And here is the leader of the party here to take your calls. I'll just put one question to him first. Uh, Richard Tice. Uh, good to have you on, uh, Mr Tice. Thanks Thank you, so much. you for good coming. Um, this is a question you'll hear a lot in broadcast. What was the mood? that came away, would you say, from Doncaster on the weekend? Uh, we had a great mood. Uh, people were very excited because we launched our contract yep. with you, with the people, which is our version of a manifesto. No one believes manifestos. And we very deliberately issued it as a draft. And it sets out how we think we've got to reorganise and change the way our economy and our country has run and managed because we are heading towards catastrophe. Nothing works. Taxes are at record highs. We're in recession. Per head, we're in the longest recession, I think, since the mid-1950s. And so we just set out a very different plan, how we can actually save significant sums of money, over £100 billion, and then how we should reinvest that in a combination of tax cuts and public sector investment, in particular in healthcare, where we've put forward a very clear plan, how you get to zero waiting lists in two years, and then how you keep them there. OK, I've got those pledges in front of me and some of the sums. We'll come to those in a moment, I'm sure. But let's get straight to the calls. That's what we are about. Andrew is in Halifax and you are through to Richard Tice. Andrew, are you the Andrew I spoke with a couple of weeks ago? You're a reform you, support, supporter. So. I, I, I certainly am. Good, uh, good to have morning, you back Nick, on, sir. OK, you're through to your party leader. Go ahead. Good morning, Richard. Um, are you keener now um, to admit Lee Anderson to your ranks, given uh, the, what he said, the sentiments of which uh, I wholeheartedly can go with, uh, after what he said over the weekend? Good morning, Andrew. Thanks for the call. Look, I'm not giving you a running commentary on discussions, as I've put out there, with any, uh, any MP of any party. That is clear. But I have put out a statement with regard to what Lee said. And look, Lee's comments by his own admission were clearly clumsy. That is for sure. But the sentiment of what I think he was trying to say is actually different. What I think he was trying to say is that millions of British people are concerned about these, uh, these marches on our streets week in, week out, particularly in London, but elsewhere across the country. And the fact that they are... They are, there's many people on those marches who, who do it with the best intentions. But I've been to some of these marches. I've spoken to some of the people. And I'm afraid to say there is actually a deep vein of anti-Semitism and hate that goes through a significant chunk of those marches. And that's what concerns me. That's why I call for them actually to be banned very early doors. That's the reality. And I think people are concerned. For example, the situation last week where we've got even the police now are afraid of arresting people who are breaking the law in Parliament Square, projecting that image onto Big Ben. MPs are afraid. I've also, I've got my own candidate in the current by-election who yesterday received a serious death threat. So there's a lot of tension out there. And I think that our authorities, our police need to show real leadership to, to try and nip this in the bud. I want to talk to you about Simon Danchuk, the candidate that you've referenced. Just before I come to that, Mr Tyson, you say the words that used by Mr Anderson were clumsy. What specifically was clumsy? I think he was cl clumsy in the way he used the words and specifically, I think, referring to um, uh, the Mayor of London's mates. That was clumsy. I don't think that's what he, what he was trying to was say. Was Islamophobic? No, no, uh, let me answer this. If you've, We've got time. Yep. Got but it's really important minutes. because, um, look, there's no legal definition in the UK of Islamophobia. It's a very sensitive issue. And I think it's a matter of, at the moment, it's a matter of personal judgment. And I fully appreciate those and understand those, their judgment is that it is. Let me tell you, though, why I don't think it is. The definite, well, de Islamophobia was first defined in 1997 by the Runnymede Trust, when they defined it as uh, a way of referring to a dread or hatred of Islam and a fear and dislike of all, all most Muslims. They've increased that definition and changed it. And this is actually now recommended to be adopted by the British government and the United Nations as follows. And I read this very carefully because it is sensitive. Mm -hmm. A fear, prejudice and hatred of Muslims or non-Muslim individuals that leads to provocation, hostility and intolerance by means of threatening harassment, abuse, incitement and intimidation of Muslims and non-Muslims, both in the online and offline world. If that definition was adopted, and I think this chaotic mess that the Tory party finds in probably suggests that we should get to a legal definition. I don't think that Lee Anderson's comments breach that definition. But I accept 
Different people have a different judgment okay. on the basis that there isn't a legal definition. And while I accept um, with what you said, Mr Tice, and I don't expect you to give me a running commentary on which Conservative MP you might have spoken to or indeed MPs from other parties, but Mr Anderson has indicated if the whip is not restored, he would be interested in possibly standing as a Reform UK candidate at this year's general election. So I think it's fair to say, would you welcome him? Look, I think it's a hypothetical. Let's wait well, and see. Well, he's put it in the arena, hasn't he? Yeah, everybody's put it in the arena, Nick. And I've no, said, but he has the man himself, yes. Mr. Tice. He, he's Would put, you welcome him on board? No, well, hang on. He, what he said is, if he's not re, uh, yes. returned to the Tory party, yes. which is clearly his preference, it's a hypothetical. I'm not giving a running commentary. To be honest, I'm not saying any more than that. Would you have him on the ticket? Look, I, I'm not giving a running commentary on... Uh, the issue of discussions about any MP, whether it's Lee Anderson okay. or others. What I, will say, what I will say, though, Nick, I've already turned down uh, two Tory MPs. Over what time scale? Over the last 13 months. Do we have any names? No, of course not. <laughs> what reason, then? Uh, I'm not giving a running commentary, but I'm just making the point that, uh, you know, there are some people who want to join us that we've said thanks, but no thanks. What is the bar that you have to clear then? I mean, wh wh why were they deemed... I know you're not giving me the names, and I wouldn't expect... But why were they deemed inappropriate? Well, I, I want people that uh, subscribe to our values, our principles, our integrity. And so, yes, you would expect there to be a bar, a certain threshold, and that that's a matter for us to judge in the party. But Sean Matthews is still your prospective candidate in Louth and Horncastle. Shall I remind you what he said? It's no surprise children want to remove their penises and become girls. Most of their parents started the process shortly after birth by chopping their foreskin off in the name of brackets insert deity. Last time we discussed this, you said if anyone says or writes anything daft or inappropriate, we'll look at it. He's still your candidate, so that's acceptable. And he has apologised for that and recognises that was completely wrong. And we've concluded that uh, as long as he doesn't say, say anything else... Uh, has it been taken down? Has, I believe it has been taken down, yes. I've been assured okay. of that. And he has... Uh, he has He's apologised. So you could stay with the party for having those offensive views, but whatever these two Tories did, they didn't clear the bar. Correct. Goodness knows what they did. Andrew, a quick reaction. You were one of the first people to say how excited and keen you were on reform. Quick reaction of what you've heard about the party leader. Uh, well, yes. Uh, would you like to see Lee Anderson on board? I, I certainly would, because okay. what he's saying, it's very clumsy, but what he's saying is that there are millions of, out, uh, of us out there who are sick and tired of seeing extremist Islamism disrupting our cultural and national life almost every damn week of the year. OK, sir, thank you for that. We move on. Alan in Cromer, you're through to Richard Tice. Go ahead, Alan. Uh, good morning, Nick. Thanks for the opportunity to pose questions to Richard. And Richard, good morning. Good morning, Alan. Firstly, yeah, great. Thanks for the spring conference and for live streaming it. It was fantastic. Speakers of content was relevant, open and honest. My question to you is, I also love the contract, by the way. Thank um, you very much. My question to you is, notwithstanding the current electoral first past the post system, how does my vote, which you're going to get for reform at the election, help reform, get into Parliament and ultimately save Britain by getting it moving in the right direction? Alan, thank you. Well, as long as millions more like you vote, then uh, the more votes we get, the better the chance. Look, elect um, first past the post in this uh, country is difficult for small parties. We all know that. But the many more millions that vote for reform, I think it will then become increasingly untenable to maintain the system, which is not adopted by most Western nations. And here's the absolute key reason why we should have proportional representation in this country, because the average turnout in countries with PR is about 10% higher. In the UK, that would be another 3 million people engaging in the democratic democratic process and that I think would be a really really good thing and it's quite right that people should vote for what they believe in not what they're afraid of and every vote should be equal and at the moment in many safe constituencies that is not the case. The spring in your step that was afforded from your time in Doncaster come on you and your colleagues must have had a meeting where you hope number that this will transform into an actual elected MPs Mr Tice. Yes of course we want some elected How MPs. How many? What would you think would be acceptable now? Well obviously I mean I'm, I'm an optimist Nick as many as possible. But realistically uh, what are you working uh, to? Well Alan, Alan's point is he wants to vote for you but it, and he wants reform uh, and, and reform. Can and, uh, and low case The key are. thing is Nick this is not a one term a one election project this is a medium term project to help involve to reshape the way our country is run, is run and to be involved in that debate. So look, we're here for the long term. It's difficult out to first past the post. I'm actually very optimistic in the next next electoral cycle, we will get PR. Of course I want MPs, as many as possible. But what are you working to? Double digits? As, as many as... Double digits would be great. Treble digits would be even better. 
I want to come back. Thank you, uh, Alan. Uh, Nick, coming to your call. I want to come back, and my apologies, you did reference this, and we need to come back to this very serious story concerning your candidate in Rochdale, and I need to tell all the listeners there is a list of all candidates available on lbc.co.uk, but specifically... Uh, Mr. Tice, you're concerned about the personal safety of your candidate and you've actually been in contact with the Chief Constable of Greater Manchester Police. Um, I'll r rely on you to be aware of legalities here because you're probably more aware of what's happening. What is going on up there, Mr. Tice? So, regrettably, a vile uh, racist uh, video was published online against our candidate, uh, threatening him with death. We obviously referred it to the police. It, it's the worst thing I've ever seen and heard. And it was in all your time in politics. You've in never all seen my, anything uh, of this it's level. it's off the dial. I'm afraid, off the dial, awful, so bad that yes, uh, we referred it to the police, and I've had to move my staff from their accommodation in the constituency. We've had supporters' businesses being threatened with being firebombed if they don't take down the leaflet supporting our candidate. So this is this is actually the reality of what's going on on the streets of the UK. It's very, very bad indeed. And, you know, that actually, for me, is what we should really be talking about. This okay. is extremism. This is what we've got to stamp out. This okay. is the responsibility, whether it's the Mayor of London, the, 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 the Met Police Chief, the Home Secretary, the government, they've got to show proper leadership and stamp out this stuff. Have you heard back from the Chief Constable yet? I haven't, as far as I'm aware, uh, just before I came okay. on the show.